What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, Athletenext.com. Today we're talking about the squat and how your feet should be positioned, or maybe not your feet. You see, a lot of times you probably heard the cue, turn your toes out a little bit in order to get a better depth into your squat, because a lot of us get stuck, right? We try to go down deeper into a squat, but we run out of room down there in our hip joint. We might feel it in the form of a pinch, or we might just get down to the bottom and say, I can't go any further without other compensations up and down the kinetic chain. But the problem a lot of times is in the cue. Toes out is not going to solve your problem. You need to think more up the kinetic chain towards the knees because we need those knees to be out. And the difference here is the feet themselves have a bit of external rotation capability that are a bit independent from what's going on above it. And by the way, this is a pretty badly cracked fibula. Don't let this happen to you if you're going to go to try to squat. Ignore this. This part I'm talking about is the foot. So you want to make sure that you're not just turning your toes out because they can move relatively independent from what's going on above. Not entirely, but relatively. We have much more ability to create what we're trying to do when we focus on getting the knee itself externally rotated, turned out. Why? Because when we get to the hip joint itself, what's getting stuck a lot of times is the ball in the socket. The acetabulum, whether it's faced too far forward, the orientation itself is what causes issues for people or makes it different between one person and the other. So when I bring my leg up, if the leg isn't rotated enough, what happens is as I come up to the front here, I actually hit a bony block. Right? When I get to a certain amount of flexion here, I have a bony block and I can't get any higher. You can see right here I've run out of room. But what if I can get into more external rotation, and that's by focusing on what's happening at the knee, as I get up to here, you can see how much deeper I can go. I freed up that bony block by clearing it with more external rotation. So instead of cueing your feet, you do this. You get in this position here and you turn your knees out. And what it does is a few things. Number one, it gives us the ability to get more contribution and activation of the adductors because they're on a little bit more of a stretch. The adductors can help us with extension of the hip. So when we're down at the bottom of a squat and we come up out of it, we want hip extension. So an assistance to the hamstrings, an assistance to the glutes, we get adductor activation. This is so important that oftentimes when somebody comes to me with hip pain or hip pain following squats, whether it's from an impingement or just a history of degeneration, if they squat and then they say that they don't have adductor soreness the next day, then I know they're not doing this right. You have to then focus on getting your knees out more because you want those adductors to contribute. The next thing it does is it brings in some additional help. We want the glutes to participate in getting us out of the bottom of a squat. And you can feel how much they can contribute just by doing this. Stand up if you're watching this sitting down right now. Turn your toes in as much as you can. Now try to squeeze your glutes as hard as you can. You're not going to feel that much going on there, okay? Now without doing anything else, I'm not going to change the strength of your glutes. I'm just going to change the orientation of your body and space here. I'm going to turn my hips out into more external rotation. Not the toes, the hips by getting the knees out there. Now I squeeze my glutes and I feel much more of a contraction as you will too. We know we have a lot more strength there. So if we can get the glutes to contribute with more strength here, then we've got the winning combination. So how would I cue this and make sure you're doing this properly? Well again, focus not on the feet, but on the knees. Get those knees turned out about 20 to 30 degrees. And now I take my hands right here. And I want you to take your hands and put them right here in the creases of your legs, right in that hip joint. Now visualize sitting down, having the pelvis drop right down so that just like I showed you as that leg went up into flexion, you got to drop that pelvis down in between. So if I'm right here, I drop straight down until my hands hit the floor. And you can see that my pelvis actually dropped inside my femurs, right? They're traveling out here, but they've cleared room for this up and down path of the pelvis. That is going to give you the type of cue that you're looking for. Now, the final thing, how would you reinforce this? How would you want to make sure that you're doing this properly? Well, number one, you got to make sure that your adductors are flexible enough to allow this because as your knees start traveling out, you want to make sure that you have the flexibility to allow you to continue to drop down. Those adductors are going to feel some of that stretch we talked about, that beneficial stretch that creates the reflex to get you back up out of the bottom. And the other thing is you want to make sure that you do strengthen the external rotators of the hip. And I like to do it out of a flexed position. So one of my favorite things to do is a simple clamshell exercise, just laying on your side, placing the band just above the knees, having the hips flexed here, and then of course working on external rotation strength of the glute medius from this position. 
The addition of this stretch and this exercise are really there just to reinforce what it is we're focusing on, and that is cueing you better to not focus on just the position of the foot, but more importantly on the knees. And by the way, when your knees are traveling out, they're going to find that it's a little easier for them to track out over those toes. And again, going beyond the toes is something that I've done an entire video about why it's important to allow your knees to track that way. It's just going to be a lot easier for people when you don't have to go all the way in the sagittal plane. You have some of this tendency to move out into the frontal plane. That's going to make that all a hell of a lot easier for you to execute. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you try this out. If you're having any problem at all in getting down to depth or you feel that bony block or impingement in your hip, this is going to help you tremendously. If you're looking for programs, guys, where we put the science back in strength, step by step, all of our plans are laid out over at athletics.com. If you haven't done so already, make sure you click subscribe, turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.